Hello everybody, and today I'm going to show you how to use CNC motion to actually run the part and check to make sure the stock is set up correctly and have certain tools in your library to machine your little initials on the 2x3 block. So the first thing we're going to do is open up CNC motion and let that load up. You're also going to want to have your typed out G code, whether it's relative or absolute, makes no difference. And then I just like to get that window set up to the run and edit so everything's nice and clean. So normally uh, we'll do the verification as well. Uh, make sure just like a continuation of the last video. We're going to new. So we have a nice new program there. I'm just going to grab my code here. Open up CNC motion, paste it in. Now remember if this screen is not white, you can go to edit and hit the lock or unlock to get that good to go. So now my code's in. If I want to verify it, remember I can hit this little verify button right up here. It tells me to verify the program. Prompts up on top tells us what to do. No different when we're going to actually run the machine. And there it is. So it's verified, we are good to go. Now the next part, right? Scrolling does this, right click does that, right? Moves in around. The next thing I want to do is set it up so that it looks like the machine. So here I have the vice and actually our machine. I think uh, I have the air vice set up, but this is good enough for here. Okay, so we're going to get all this set up. To so change the stock size, we're going to go set up, verify settings, stock, change it to three by two by one, one inch spacer in, uh, below it, keep all the origin and tool positions good, check through other options, all good. You, that's all good. Hit OK. So now our stock is set to the right size. Okay, next we go to 3D image, setup machine. So here, this is where we can set up the stock dimensions, three by two by one. We'll make those are same as what we verified. Material plastic doesn't make a difference. Change the color if you like. Show the verifier, 3D, good. And the threshold you can keep at 0 0.02, that's uh, standard. Vice, you can do the manual vice, that is fine. Um, offset, I have mine at around five and a half inches. This is pretty much centered on kind of the X axis there, but that's fine. You could leave it just like that. Um, this head does not have the ATC or the automatic tool changer hooked up. So we, but we really don't need to worry about it for here. Not yet. Uh, at some point we can worry about it. Hit okay. So you can notice here, it's got our X, Y axis. So once again, we are at the manual vice five and a half inches or so. That's right, so if I change to 5.5, you can see how it moves it on the table. Works, hit okay. Okay, so now the 3D image looks like that. We are good to go. From here, we need to do a couple of things. First thing, if you look on the bottom, it says press for error report. It tells me that the shield is open. So let's take a look at some of the controls on the side. We have our spindle on over here. Let's click off that. So if you hover over, it tells us that's a spindle. It turns it on at whatever set speed. Spindle direction, clockwise, counterclockwise. Coolant, if we have it hooked up, which you can see a little hose is here, it's hooked up. And then this is to open and close the vise. And especially if you have the pneumatic vise hooked up, it'll open and close it. And here's our shield opener. These are the outputs on the machine. And then these right here are basically like kind of what's happening from emergency stop and telling us different parameters of what's going on, whether or not we hit limits or close to the limits. Those are the major ones. We come over to the side here. We have the jog. If you notice, when I press Y and hold it, it moves the table. X position moves it here. Z, right, in that direction speeds at which we can move it or we can so this one's continuous we could go in step sizes so like every time you click it'll move a tenth of an inch or a thousandth of an inch different feed overrides and spindle overrides if you see that you want to run it faster or slower you can this screen is what we use to run the actual machine right here it's not going to do much but it'll you know we don't really need to worry about it now run settings so you can do an optional skip optional stop or a single step. Basically, these are when you're running the program, you can run it line by line at a time. So let, right now, let's just get into the basics of it. We need, the first thing we need to do is shut this 
chuck this shield. You see that it comes down, kind of graze out a little bit, and we are going to home it. So I'm just going to show you the regular home procedure. This is so that the machine can basically kind of set itself up. It knows where the table and everything is located and itself. You can see the absolute values, relative values, the machine, now that it's home, is at zero, 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 and distance to go, well, it's got nowhere to go. Once it's homed, we then need to set the origin for the actual block. Now, for us, our origin is going to be right here, right? That is going to be our x, this way, y, 0, and everything builds off of that. The easiest way to do it is come up to this, send tool to corner. So I click it, and I bring it down to over here, and it says, oh, that's the corner. So let's zoom in. So it's right at the corner. I go to setup, set position, 0, 0, 0 and I hit OK. Now the machine knows that that is the position of the origin of the block. Remember when we made our code, or when we look at the verify over here, that's where it is, and then we built our letters out. Setup, also, we gotta make sure we have the right tool. We have an eighth inch end mill that should be in there. So we can go to, sorry, tools, setup library. You wanna make sure when you go to tool one, T01, that it is an end mill, four teeth, it's a high-speed steel that the diameter is 0.125. Currently, we do not need to worry about offsets, so don't worry about it. You can hit Apply and OK. Now we are good to go. There's also a Quick Home option. So if you hit Home, Quick Home, see how it moves it all back. Does no harm. It's fine. We still know that that's 000, and that is our machine home, and it says right here. At this point, you are ready to run the program. Come up you can hit the play button here or down here. So I'm gonna hit cycle start. Run program one, right? Up on the top, it prompts us that big yellow bar, hit F5, positive limit hit, okay? It's probably because I homed it again. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this away, jog it, bring it down, and let's hit play. Okay, press F5, now it's running the program. And if we zoom in, you may actually see it cut at the same time. So there it's cutting. And you see it on the verify, it's running at the same time. It on the bottom here will tell us what line it's working on and the part time. So here, you can use these for your submission where it asks you part time. This runs in real speed. So it's going at the whopping nine inches per minute. If we want to increase it, we can. So we can make it go a little faster. So we're at 165%. Like it's a simulation, so we're not going to see um, anything bad happen here. But move it, wrap it over to the R. All right, so right now we're at a part time of about one minute. It tells us that we're on line 19. So right over here. Okay, I'm moving down. Sorry, there's no way of making any of this bigger. Right, feed rate all the way on the bottom here, spindle speed. Right, so we can even change our spindle speed. So, right, you see it changing over there. So we're at 3,400 RPMs. And it's going around. Almost done. And that's it. Goes back to that Z position of two. And we have our three letters. And there you have it. You have uh, successfully just run the machine. And uh, that's pretty much how we do it in real life. So there's the pan option right there. Um, you can save this, record this, number of options. And there you have it. That's the basics to running it. Some things that you might run across if the uh, drawbar is not locked, it'll say it. that's up over here. You'll click that. If uh, your code isn't verified correctly, obviously you're going to run into issues there. If it's not running, the error reports there. Sometimes the shield not being open, uh, started, not being closed, is an issue. That one's right there. Those are probably the, some of the two most common problems that you're going to run across. Other than that, you are almost ready to run it on an actual machine. So run it a couple of times. Run both sets of codes, your relative and absolute. Get all your pictures for your submission, and you're all good to go. 
All right, everyone, have a good day.